in the previous segment, we talked about lymph and lymphatic vessels. Now let us talk about the lymph nodes. Now lymph nodes are lymphoid tissues which are present in the path of the vessels. And the lymph nodes, they are just small um, kidney shaped or bean shaped structures. So let us first see the location where these lymph nodes are found. Lymph nodes are everywhere in our body, but their number is maximum. So when we talk of location, it is everywhere in our body, but maximum in neck region, axilla and groin. These are the regions where these lymph nodes are maximum in number and they act as filters. So these lymph nodes, they are performing two main functions. One, they act as filters. That means they remove certain toxic or harmful substances or pathogens from our body. And it is also believed that they also remove cancerous cells. In cancer, we use the word metastasis. That means these cancerous cells, they keep circulating in our body because when in uh, malignant tumors, there are two types of tumors, benign and malignant. So when in malignant tumor, those cancerous cells, they detach, they get or they circulate in the body. So these lymph nodes are even capable of removing those cancerous cells. And they also remove the pathogen. So we call them filters or they act as filters. Second, lymph nodes are also the sites where these lymphocytes are going to be produced. So for production of lymphocytes. Now let us first see the structure and then we will take a few more things about it. Each lymph node is a small bean or kidney shaped structure and the outer layer is made up of fibrous tissue. It is a fibrous capsule and this fibrous capsule shows in folds. These in folds are known as trabeculae. So this is fibrous capsule and these infolds of the fibrous capsule are trabeculae. Then inside there is a hilum. So there is a part which is known as hilum. Inside this lymphoid tissue there is connective tissue or inside this lymph node, this connective tissue. This connective tissue is mainly uh, reticular connective tissue, but it is divided into two parts. The outer part is known as the cortex and the inner one is known as medulla. So here we have drawn the outer part. This is cortex and the inner one is known as medulla. In the cortex are present clusters of follicles. <clears throat> so cortex has follicular follicular clusters. And these follicular clusters are basically lymphocytes. So these follicles, they are initially primary nodules. These primary nodules have lymphocytes. But when these lymphocytes, they get stimulated by antigen, then this primary nodules, they change into secondary nodules. So again, there's a cluster, 
but when you call that cluster as primary nodule, it has only lymphocytes. These lymphocytes, they mature, divide to produce plasma cells. That is when it is known as secondary nodule. So this secondary nodule has activated lymphocytes. These activated lymphocytes means lymphocytes have been activated by antigen. And there are also plasma cells because these plasma cells, they are the ones which are going to produce the antibodies. So cortex has these clusters. They may remain as primary and after getting activated with the antigen, those lymphocytes, they become activated and plasma cells are formed. <coughs> Sorry. So this is what is seen in case of cortex. So here in cortex, we may find these kind of clusters. So these are the follicles, primary or secondary nodules. That is the follicular clusters. So this is a normal thing which is there in a lymph node. And as we said, they are everywhere in the path. So when uh, suppose we talk of a situation, say this is a lymphatic vessel and in its path we have this lymph node. So this lymph node is producing those lymphocytes and plasma cells so they can come into this circulation uh, finally. Another very important lymphoid tissue when we talk of this is lymph node and when we use the word lymphoid, uh, lymphoid tissue, then we can talk of many lymphoid tissue. One, spleen, tonsils, even appendix. So there are many areas where we have these lymphoid tissues. Here we will talk of spleen. The reason why we are talking of spleen because it is a very, very important lymphoid tissue and it plays very significant roles in our body. In case of embryonic life, when we are in our embryonic stage, this spleen acts as an erythropoietic organ. So, in embryonic life, it acts as erythropoietic organ or tissue. That means it produces RBCs. After birth, it stores RBCs and after RBCs have completed their life of 120 days, this is the same place where they get destroyed. So, after birth, it performs two things. It stores RBCs and destroys RBCs. Destroys RBCs is only when it is completed. The RBCs have completed their lifespan. And that is why, because it stores RBC, it is known as the blood bank of our body. And it destroys the old RBCs. So it is also known as graveyard. Graveyard of RBC. So it is the same tissue which is acting as a blood bank also and it is also acting as the graveyard. But we have to remember that it stores RBC and it destroys RBC after they have completed their lifespan. Now this spleen basic structure it is a simple lymphoid tissue. So the outer part is again fibrous and mainly it is yellow elastin fiber. So this capsule, the outer layer of spleen is known as splenic capsule which is a fibrous layer and this fibrous layer is also projected inwards in the form of these short trabeculae. Inside there is pulp and this pulp mainly has red pulp because this is the place where the RBCs are being stored. 
So this common uniform pulp which we see is known as red pulp and scattered in the red pulp are areas where there would be no red pulp and those regions are known as white pulp where WBCs or lymphocytes are present. So this is known as the white pulp and this white pulp would have lymphocytes, macrophages, it has lymphocytes, macrophages and because it is without the red part, it is appearing white. So it is known as white pulp. Plus, in this pulp, there is blood supply, there are blood vessels, nerves, fibers, all those things are there. That is basically a connective tissue. So spleen and the location, it is located above the stomach part. In embryonic stage, it acts as an erythropoietic organ. After that, after birth, the function of erythropoiesis is taken over by the bone marrow. After birth, it is performing two functions. It stores RBC. That is, it is, that is why it is known as the blood bank. And it destroys RBC after the RBCs have completed their lifespan. And that is why it is also known as the graveyard. So this is about the lymph nodes and one important lymphatic organ. Now if we have to sum up the functions of this lymph or lymphatic system, what are the functions which are performed? Number one, as we said that the lymph or one lymphatic capillary that is lacteal helps in transport of fat. So that is one function, transport of absorbed fat. Second function, it is acting as a filter, so it removes harmful things. So acts as filter. And third thing, lymphocytes, that means it protects our body, so acts as a defense mechanism. So protects by producing, synthesizing lymphocytes. Fourth, lymphoid tissues are the places where the lymphocytes, they mature and become B cells or T cells. Uh, in immune system, we talk about cell-mediated immune system and humoral immune system. There are two types of lymphocytes which help. They are called B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Now, these lymphocytes, <clears throat> the reason why they are called B and T, because the formation takes place in the bone marrow. But B lymphocytes, their name has been given because they mature in bursa of fabricus. This is a lymphoid tissue which is found in cloaca of vertebrates, not in case of mammals. So this is a lymphoid tissue found in cloaca of lower vertebrates. We don't have bursa in our case, this B lymphocytes, they mature in pairs patches. So in humans or we can say mammals, they mature in pairs patches, which are again special type of lymphoid tissues. So B cells, their maturation is also taking place in lymphoid tissue. So that also becomes the function of lymphatic system. The second cell that is T cell, <coughs> the T cells, they mature in thymus. So their maturation takes place in thymus. And that is why we talk of these maturation of lymphoid tissue that is, B cells and T cells in lymphoid tissues 
and that also becomes the function of lymphatic system. So what we have seen as function, transport of fat, it acts as a filter, removes toxic substances, pathogens and even cancerous cells. It protects our body as or by uh, producing lymphocytes and the last one is formation of B cells and T cells. B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes they mature in bursa of fabricus and that is how they got the name B cells. But bursa of fabricus is not found in human beings or mammals. It is found in lower vertebrates. In our case this maturation takes place in other lymphoid tissue which is called Pears patch but the name still remains B lymphocytes and T cells which mature in thymus. So these are all lymphoid tissues where these uh, lymphocytes B and T lymphocytes they mature. So this is how we sum up the functions of lymphatic system.